Hey guys, so we're going to be working on lesson 5-3 today, which is about multi-step inequalities. So yesterday we talked about inequalities, not inequations, qualities. Our last set of notes was about um, adding and subtracting, doing one-step inequalities. Um, we're going to do the same thing, but this time have multi-steps. So... Reminder, remember to solve as we did with equations. The big difference is inequalities have an infinite number of correct answers and equations do not. Now, remember, these notes are going to be pretty short, but I've heard some people complaining about the notes being too long. Remember, you don't have to sit there for the whole time and take them. Do it in breaks. Do it in, when I go to a new screen, take a break. Come back to it, okay? Um, so you don't have to sit there and go through it, all right? Just take your breaks. So number one, we're going to distribute To remove parentheses. Now, some of you really kind of struggled with this back in chapter two, so that's why we hit it up again. Because we can't do anything when there's parentheses. Number two, we're going to um, combine like terms. On a side. until, or on, let's say, each side. Let me change that. Each side, until there are no more than two terms per side. So, for example, a term with a variable and a term that's just a constant, okay? Super, super important, all right? This is the one thing I know a lot of people struggled with when we were working on this before, and they would go back and forth, back and forth, and inevitably something would happen, okay? So, oh, excuse me, do inverse operations. Using... And we're going to start with what we would end with if we were doing order of operations. We're going to start by using addition or subtraction. And the reason why we do that is to avoid creating fractions. And we then have to do math with oops, sorry, subtraction uh, to get variables on the left. Remember, we always want the variable on the left because if we have the variable on the left, then the inequality will point the direction you are supposed to be coloring. Variables on the left. And constants on the right. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and do inverse operations. Using multiplication or division. Whatever undoes what we have. Now remember, sometimes you can use multiplication when you have a fraction because you want to multiply by the reciprocal, right? Um, to remove... Oh, my tummy's making all sorts of noise. Sorry, guys. The coefficient... in front of the variable. Okay, so again, we want it just to say x, then in the inequality, and then um, the constant, okay? Now, we do have to remember this guy. The 
the inequality flips if you multiply or divide by a negative number. Even a negative one. Oops, negative number. Okay. So your final answer should take this format. Variable, no coefficient. Then you're going to see the inequality symbol. Oh my goodness. And then the constant. Okay. All right, so I think I might be able to fit some on here. Let's see if I can get a couple on here. If not, we'll go to the next page. It says solve, then graph the solution. So we're going to do a number line graph. Okay, and just to let you know, we are not doing a quiz in this chapter. Again, we have a lot of quests that go on in this chapter because we're just doing pieces of things. Okay, so that'll happen in a couple of weeks, and I'll tell you the date, maybe in class tomorrow. So what we have here is a negative 11y minus 13 is greater than 42. Okay, so all the y's are on the left, which means I'm going to add 13 to both sides to get the constants on the right. That gives me negative 11y is greater than, then I get 55. Then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 11. Ooh, ooh. And I remind myself, you're going to be flipping. So I draw that little arrow to remind myself. I can just hear you now. Do I have to do that? The answer is no. I just do stuff to visually cue myself. The signs are different, so my answer is negative, And 11 goes into 55 five times. Okay. When I have a whole number... I'm just going to put three tick marks on my number line. My number that is the solution to my, or the beginning number of my inequality is going to go in the middle. And then in front is going to be a number less than it, and then behind it, a number greater than it. And then I am going to take a gander at my inequality. And less than means an open circle, because negative 5 is not a solution. And then it also is pointing to the left for smaller numbers. So open circle at negative 5 and color to the left for less than and exaggerate that line. I want to see that arrow cap colored in. All right, next one. I'm going to get a little bit heavier. We have 4 times the quantity, 3t minus 5. So just a little suggestion, don't write your t. Um, without the little tail on it, otherwise it's going to look like a plus sign. Plus 7 is greater than or equal to 8t plus 3. Okay, so we need to go ahead and distribute to remove parentheses. 4 times 3, oh, sorry, why did I write negative? That was weird. 12t, and then we've got... 4 times negative 5 is going to be a negative 20, and then nothing else happens. We just write out the rest of everything. Okay, so the right side has two terms, and you can't combine them. The left side, though, I do have two terms that can combine. So I'm going to keep the 12t, but negative 20 plus 7 is negative 13. Now I'm going to do this in two colors, but I like to do getting my variables on the left, doing inverse operations. In this case, I have to subtract 8t from both sides and get my constants to the right, in this case, adding 13 to both sides. I like to do them at the same time. It's just efficient. So 12t take away 8t is 4t, is greater than or equal to, and then 3 plus 13 is 16. So if you notice, the 8t's and the 13's disappear. All right, I've got a coefficient, so the inverse of multiplying is dividing by 4. 
I don't need to flip the inequality, I don't need to flip-flop it because I didn't divide by a negative. So I get t is greater than or equal to 4. So again, I have a whole number. So I'm just going to put three tick marks. I'm going to put 4 in the center. Before it is the number less than it. After it is the number greater than it. And then I'm going to look at my inequality. It has greater than or equal to, so that means it's going to be a closed dot that says 4 is a solution. And then I'm going to color to the right for greater than. So at the 4, I'm going to fill it in, make no mistakes, color to the right, and there we go. And then number 3, we've got 9t minus 5 times the quantity t minus 5 is less than or equal to, oh boy, more parentheses, 4 times the quantity t minus 3, and a lot of negatives here. Oof. So definitely have to do some distribution. Now the good news is 9t doesn't change. Here's where we need to pay attention, though. This isn't 5 being multiplied, it's negative 5, because I could rewrite this as adding negative 5. So a negative times a positive is a negative, and 5 times t is 5t. A negative times a negative is a positive, and 5 times 5 is 25. And then we have less than or equal to, and then we're going to have to distribute over here. <clears throat> 4 times t is 4t. And then 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12. Now we're going to look for anything that we can combine, any like terms. It looks like t is on the left. 9t take away 5t is 4t plus 25 is less than or equal to. And then we have this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get my variables on the left. I'm going to subtract 4t from both sides. Ooh. That looks interesting. <clears throat> and I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides since he was positive. Doing those inverse operations. This goes away, this goes away, this goes away. So that means I'm left with 0 on the left side and negative 37 on the right side. So when is 0 less than or equal to negative 37? And the answer is, it's a false statement. That can't be true. So on this case, there's no solution. So we could say, no solution. We could use the null, which is a zero with a slash through it. Or we could do this guy, which is called the empty set. So there's nothing there. Okay? All right, one more, and we're going to go to the next screen. So if you need a pause, pause. But here we go. This is a doozy, though. We're going to do a word problem. So there's a lot to unpack in it. It says 5 minus 6 times a number is more than four times the number plus 15. Okay, man, there's a lot in here. Okay, so I think what I want to do is to look for words that tell me to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. I think that's what I want to do first. So minus means to subtract, times means to multiply, times means to multiply, and plus means to add. Okay, next I think I want to find the phrase that tells me greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Okay, because it's got to be one of those four. So I know that it sounds like a word that means to add or subtract sometimes, but it has the word is in front. 
So this guy right here <coughs> is more than, gives me the greater than symbol. Okay, so what it also does is breaks what comes in front and what comes behind the inequality symbol. Okay, let's find the unknown. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. We're going to have the number, that number. So notice the difference between multiplication and my variable. And then the rest are just numbers. So let's write those in. 5, 6, 4, 15. And I didn't have any switcher phrases in the whole bunch, so that's going to make this pretty easy. Okay, so I have 5 minus 6 times a number is more than 4 times the number plus 15. Okay, now this is still under the directions of solve and then graph the solution. But when it's a word problem, we're not going to graph the solution. We're going to write the solution in a sentence. So we're going to go ahead and get the variables on the left, subtracting 4x from both sides, get the constants on the right, subtracting 5 from both sides. Let's see, that goes away, that goes away. I get negative 10x is greater than 10. So then I'm going to divide by negative 10, which reminds me I'm going to have to um, flip-flop that inequality. And I get x is less than negative 1. Now, <clears throat> negative 1 is not an answer, right? Because it says less than. So I'm going to say the number is anything less than negative 1. And that would be my solution. All right, and there you go. All right, good luck with this, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.